Well, I'm back. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. You've been a wonderful leader. And it's so great to be back for our anniversary, our 25th anniversary. Just look. Just look at all of us. It's incredible. You can feel our passion. You can feel our power. Seldom have so many wellness warriors, all of us, who practice and fight for making lives healthier, stronger, and longer been in one room. Thank you. 25 years ago, a small, merry band of spasters started iSpa. They invited me to be the first speaker. By the second year, my son Alex became involved, heart and soul. Everyone hoped it would grow. Just like anyone who plants a tree, it begins as a sapling. They nurture it, and they hope someday to sit in the shade of a mighty tree. Well, I'd say that tree, I spot, grew magnificently, thanks to you all. Together, we are that mighty tree. And our branches spread to every discipline and to almost every country. As I do each year, I want to remind you of your power. Every day, you have the opportunity and the obligation, from my point of view, to help your clients by going beyond the healing therapies and all the services you offer. I want you to be leaders and counselors, advisors and friends to your clients, their families and communities. I implore you to use the wellnesswarrior.org free newsletters and activist campaigns that I've dedicated my life to the last three, four years. Stay informed when you return home. Use this knowledge to heal not only yourself, but everyone you touch. The health of our country's citizens, and yes, the health of our planet, depend on us. Over 85% of all diseases and early deaths in this country are preventable. Such a waste of human resources. You can, and I know, if you decide that you will, you can make change. And that's the most important thing we can do. We who know have the ability to bring change. Well, today, it's my great pleasure to introduce our guest of honor and our next speaker, as well as presenter with the Alex A.K. Humanitarian Award. Alice Waters is someone who, as the old saying goes, needs no introduction. Alice is everything, a chef, restaurateur, an author of over 20 books, and food activist. And she's my good friend. And I admire that she fights for all the good causes. Alex founded the Edible Schoolyard Project 20 years ago. Edible Schoolyard is an innovative model for public education grades kindergarten through 12. It integrates the growing and cooking of food into the core academic curriculum. That is the only answer to the future health of our nation is educating our children so they can educate their parents. Today, the online Edible Schoolyard Network, ediblesschoolyard.org, so you can all look it up, has grown to more than 4,000 member programs in 54 countries. Now you're about to meet the Wonder Woman, who has done everything for children's health that I ever dreamed of possible. Alice is the person I most admire and love, and it's just not me and you that think so highly of her. So does President Obama, 
who just last month presented to her the National Humanities Medal at the White House. That's a big deal. Because as they recognize Alice, they recognize our work, our work to bring health and well-being to our people. I just wish my son Alex was here to join us in giving a hug to Alice as we present her with the Alex A.K. Humanitarian of the Year Award. I do with this? <laughs> Where can I put it? That beautiful place. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Deborah, for that beautiful introduction. And I feel like you've been an amazing mentor to me, and I thank you. And I'm particularly touched to receive this award because it's named after Alex, who was not only a family men a member to some of you, but as most of you know, a true visionary who dedicated so much of his life to improving other people's lives. So again, thank you. Thank you. I must say I was a bit surprised when I heard you wanted to honor me. I think of myself as a cook and a teacher, and I didn't quite get the connection. But when I reflected on my first trip to Rancho La Puerta many years ago, too many years ago, and I remember how I was so struck with the beauty and tranquility of the place, and of course, the warm hospitality. But what made a bigger impression on me was the deep ecological understanding. And actually, it was the first time I had a massage. <laughs> well, it well, Deborah asked me to teach a cooking class with my friends, Ruth Reichel and Marion Cunningham. And we all saw firsthand how intense the engagement with the biodiversity was and how sensitively and carefully the land was being stewarded. I mean, there was a kitchen garden beginning right there out in the desert. And I realized very quickly that Deborah and her family were wanting to do a version of what we were doing in Berkeley at Chez Panisse, but in a slightly different, much larger way. They were wanting to make people feel comfortable, for sure, but they were also wanting to open them up, take care of them in a profound level, help them discover be better ways of being from way down inside their selves. And they had the sense that the best way to do this, like we were discovering in Berkeley, was through the senses, with the purest and the most authentic ingredients and methods. The trip to Rancho La Puerta awakened me to the broader possibility that spas could provide. The education, in a sense, that they could provide. So thinking back on that, I understand the connection. We're all trying to do the same thing here. Well, lately I've been working on a memoir of sorts, an excruciating experience, to say the least, but dredging up all kinds of memories. 
But interestingly enough, one of the experiences I keep returning to in my life was the time that I went into a bathhouse. And it was in Turkey. And I was in my early uh, 20s, and I was traveling around like a college student living in a tent. And in Turkey at that time, you didn't see many women in the streets, and getting around was pretty rough, to say the least. But once you went underground into the sanctuary of the bathhouse, a whole different atmosphere pervaded, a whole different set of values in place. First of all, it was just women. So I felt free and unjudged and without any need for defenses. And the architecture of the place, with its alcoves and the tiles and the fountain and just pouring water supported these feelings. And it was so soothing and peaceful in stark contrast to, to the sort of aggressive and gritty hustle and bustle outside. A convivial and relaxed social atmosphere naturally flourished in the bathhouse. And there were all kinds of women of all ages. They were talking to each other and relaxing, and there were children who were running around and laughing and playing. And it felt so communal and so safe, so connected. And of course, there were those amazing people that worked there, and they, um, they certainly knew how to handle people's bodies. <laughs> it was paradise. <laughs> But the thing that struck me the most was what happened at the end of that visit. I was sitting um, with my clothes on, on the steps up to the lobby, the transitioning place um, and the peaceful atmosphere where I'd been, that place between that and the chaotic world outside. And the attendants were saying to me in Turkish, and I translated it as, take your time. Take it slow, relax, catch your breath. And just then, this young woman came up to me and she offered me, believe it or not, a ripe red apple. And she said again in Turkish, of course, and I didn't understand a thing, but I'm sure it was, eat this, it will help. And so, so I bit into the, that apple, and it was, of course, delicious. And eating that apple, savoring it in that transitional space, not only nourished me, but it grounded me in ways that I hadn't expected and allowed me to digest what I was feeling and integrate that experience. And tasting the apple engaged my senses in a much more visceral energized way. And eating it, I felt completely alive, solidly rooted and whole, as if I'd almost been rewired. And I came out of the bath hole not only replenished physically, but with a deeper understanding of, and I dare say, connection to my interior self and the culture that was around me. And that apple had a lot to do with it. Food has such an important role to play in our lives, obviously, but also in our places of rejuvenation. And when people are open and relaxed and in touch with the deeper parts of their being, like I was, food can meet them there, galvanizing their experience and deepening it and opening up. They're opened up in such a profound way. I really believe that food helps the bioenergetic changes that have been happening in the spa solidify in one's being so that the changes become permanent in them, structural, so to speak, affecting their future behavior. It's an amazing moment, actually, when someone is open and relaxed. It's a perfect time for them to be edibly educated, as I would say. Introducing them to something tasty and special at that moment will resonate inside them for a very long time. 
people always think that it's the food at Chez Penny's that they're responding to. And it is the food, don't get me wrong. But it's more than that. It's what I'm talking about here. It's how food opens them up to everything else around them. But for this kind of thing to happen with food, it needs to be real. It can't be any kind of fast food or overworked or artificial on any level. It needs to be vital and locally sourced, just picked if possible, seasonal of the moment, organic, of course. It's the aliveness and the purity of the food, the chi that ignites the aliveness and purity within us. It's the subtlety and complexity of real taste, not taste covered up or accentuated by salt or sugar or preservatives, that, that excites the internal systems within us to reorganize themselves in a healthier, more vibrant pattern. A persimmon in the fall, a strawberry in the spring, a peach in the summer. It doesn't take much. And the right food can usually be find, found right outside the door uh, or at a nearby market. Real food given at the right moment sort of, I say, fans the flames that regenerate the fire inside us. And it doesn't need to be fancy. So what was so great about that experience in Turkey was that it wasn't rarefied. It wasn't something that only a few people could have. Luxurious for sure, but it wasn't a luxury in the sense of being overly precious or expensive. And I think it's a primal desire of people to have something simple and natural. They're satisfied with purely earthbound, delicious taste. They're filled up with that. And when things are done with purity and simplicity, they are more ecologically sound too. They naturally fall into balance. And maybe some of you have discovered this, that water is conserved, less towels and papers are used, less garbage is created, less electricity is used, less pollution. It's what I remember about the experience at Rancho La Puerta and other places that I've visited over the years. The simplicity, the authenticity, the integrity. These are the real luxuries and the lessons I took home into my own life. It's another thing that's great about food. When someone has a memory of deep transformational experience in one place, like I did with that apple, they want to repeat it in their everyday lives. And they'll remember that taste and search it out outside the spa to try to rekindle those feelings. So food becomes kind of a catalyst for the kinds of deeper changes I think we're all trying to foster and want our clients and our, and our customers to foster on their own. It may sound kind of romantic now, but that time in Turkey was the first time I really felt the power of and the necessity for places that can rejuvenate ourselves, social places that rejuvenate us, like Japanese baths, Hungarian baths, places woven into the social structure of our communities, where everyone can partake in a ritualized pause in the day. These places help us to know where we are in time and space. They break down all the social barriers and they help us digest our experience, becoming more connected and human. And I don't think I need to argue this point here. As much as I'm caring about the family meal and school lunch these days, 
I'm yearning for quality places for replenishment, affordable, vital places of replenishment. And I think if we all stay the course, working with sincerity and purity and authenticity, we're going to foster ecological balance and all our customers and clients will continue to benefit and learn what it truly feels like to be alive. They'll think they're coming in just to relax like I was doing when I was in Turkey and they'll be reborn. Thank you. Thank you so much.